Just like the Vietnamese divide, the Koreans went through a divide. And just like the Vietnamese, their divide was rooted in larger issues of global politics. Let's find out why. Today, the Korean peninsula is divided into two. But there was a time when it was divided into many states. Over time, and besieged by expansive transient dynasties outside of this modest piece of land, many clans and tribes overran its regions. None of these potential overlords managed to prevail. Since Korea had long been seen as a gateway to other countries and the Yellow Sea, it was harassed for years. Larger countries that were either on their way to somewhere else, like China, or wanted a springboard to control the trade and colonization of the archipelagos, smaller countries, and islands around the Pacific Ocean, treated Korea as an afterthought. The Western nations also had interests in Korea, as it wished to curtail the full control of the Pacific to only one country and opening Korea up to trade. As a result of these competing forces, Korea isolated itself until the latter half of the 19th century. In 1910, Japan annexed Korea and ruled it with an iron fist, even to the point of assimilating the unique culture of Korea into its own culture. The Koreans, however, fought long and hard to preserve their individuality as a nation. They eschewed control by other forces, even friendly ones, to protect their unique culture and political identity. Even though Koreans fought long and hard to remain one individual nation, they eventually split into two. But how did this split come about? After its victory in the First Sino-Japanese War in 1895, Japan decided to control the politics and development of the Korean Kingdom, known at that point as Joseon. The King and Queen of Joseon turned to Russia for help against increasing Japanese oppression. To counter this, the Japanese assassinated Queen Min. King Gojong and his son fled to the Russian legation in Seoul, where they stayed for a year, returning to their kingdom in 1897. The country, responding to pressure from the Western nations, declared itself definitively independent from Japan and China. Gojong announced the establishment of the Empire of Korea, with him as the first emperor. At this point, there was only one Korea. Russia drew up a new agreement with Korea in 1898. They wanted Korea to conduct all state affairs through a set of Russian advisors, who would control the financial system and military affairs. The Russians trained the Korean forces and made economic deals with Korea. However, after the Russo-Japanese War and its concluding treaty, the Treaty of Portsmouth, Japan annexed Korea in 1910, dissolving the Korean Empire. An era of Japanese repression commenced. In 1919, the Koreans protested and demanded their independence in the March 1st movement. When the Second World War came around, Japan conscripted 5 million Koreans into their civilian war effort. In early August 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Although World War II had already ended in the European theater, this move ended the war in the Pacific theater. Before World War II officially ended, the Soviet Union invaded the Japanese puppet government in Manchuria, starting the Soviet-Japanese War a few days after the bombs were dropped on Japan. As a result of this war, the Soviet Union occupied the north of Korea and the United States came in to occupy the southern part in September 1945, fearing Russian expansion. On September 12, 1945, the People's Republic of Korea was established, which divided Korea into zones, with the Soviet Union in the north and the U.S. in the south. The Soviet Union worked with a local People's Committee established there, passing sweeping reforms and redistributing the Japanese land to poor farmers. The old land classes were unhappy with this, Protests arose, and many people fled south. The United States, on the other hand, refused to acknowledge the People's Republic of Korea, as it had communist elements in it, and outlawed it three months after its establishment. This led people who supported the People's Republic, established by Russia, to rise up. It is estimated that between 30,000 and 100,000 people were killed in the military campaigns against these insurgents in a few years. At the Moscow Conference in December 1945, it was agreed that the Soviet Union, the U.S., the Republic of China, and Great Britain would be a part of a trusteeship over Korea, which would end in five years when Korea would be declared independent and unified under one government. Although many Koreans wanted their independence, the trusteeship was put in place. A Soviet-U.S. commission took place in 1946 and 1947 
to work out the issues of a unified government, but failed to make any progress. The Cold War tensions were already starting to seep in, and the Koreans were incredibly opposed to the trusteeship, making it hard to come to any definitive agreements. As the Commission bickered amongst themselves, the divisions between the two zones only deepened. In May 1946, it was illegal to cross the 38th parallel, the line that split the two zones, without a permit. Since the Commission was not making any progress, the issues were brought to the United Nations in 1947. The UN decided that Korea should elect a national assembly for the whole country and have the UN supervise the election. The Soviets rejected any form of election, so the elections were only held in the South. Koreans began to see this as the inevitable splitting of their country, and protests against the elections started in 1948. However, the general election still took place in May. In August, the Republic of Korea took over the government from the U.S., with Syngman Rhee, an anti-communist and pro-American politician, as the president of the South. In the North, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was established in early September with Kim Il-sung, a communist who had worked hard to get the Japanese out of his country, as the prime minister. Korea had officially split into two. Jeju, a South Korean island, protested vehemently against the elections in 1947, as the people there knew the election would lead to the splitting of Korea. SKLP, or the Workers' Party of South Korea, a communist organization, led most of these protests. As time went on, and as the election drew nearer, the demonstrations became more frequent and more violent. The U.S. feared that the rebels might successfully stop the polls from taking place in order to blockade of the island to prevent people from the mainland from reaching Jeju. The insurgents were not as active during the summer, but they picked back up once the elections in North Korea were about to occur, forming underground elections for those wanting to participate. Many civilians were killed during this uprising most of them at the hands of the Republic of Korea, or ROK, and the U.S. It is thought that 14,373 civilians died, with some death tolls going as high as 30,000. The overall death toll goes up as high as 100,000. About 70% of the island's villages were burned down, and recent discoveries have found mass graves of bodies. This event was, for the most part, buried in history. For almost 50 years after the uprising, it was a crime for any South Korean to even mention the events of the Jeju Uprising. It was punishable by beatings, torture, or a lengthy prison sentence. In the 1990s, though, the South Korean government openly admitted the atrocities on the island, and in 2006, it issued an official apology. When World War II ended, the Chinese Civil War resumed which was between the government of the Republic of China, led by the Chinese Nationalist Party, and the Communist Party of China. In late September 1949, Mao Zedong established the People's Republic of China, and by August 1950, the Communist Party of China had won the war, placing Mao Zedong in charge. Before that war fully ended, though, a new one had started. In March 1949, Kim Il-sung visited Joseph Stalin in Moscow, and proposed a forcible reunification of Korea. Stalin agreed, but wanted to wait to strike, as the time was not quite right. In the spring of 1950, Stalin believed the time was right. Mao Zedong had secured his final victory in China, and the U.S. had withdrawn from Korea. Since the U.S. did not help in the Chinese Civil War, Stalin assumed they would not come back to Korea to stop the spread of communist influence. South Korea became restless as the Soviet Union supplied North Korea with arms. Knowing that war was imminent, many clashes broke out along the 38th parallel. On June 25, 1950, the North Korean army crossed the 38th parallel and invaded South Korea. America, worried this could spread into another world war, wanted to move against North Korea, and they presented the issue to the United Nations. The United Nations condemned the invasion and decided to assist South Korea. The United Nations command forces were placed under the leadership of U.S. General Douglas MacArthur to expel the North Koreans and restore peace. War broke out, and as wars do, it took lives. In the first Battle of Seoul that started on June 25th, the North Koreans occupied the city within three days. In the consequent Battle of Osan, a town just south of Seoul, the North Koreans repelled American forces with the help of Soviet tanks. 
As the Americans retreated and regrouped southward of the city of Pyeongtaek, their mismanagement caused panic among the ranks, who fled in the face of oncoming Soviet T-34 tanks. After receiving some ammunition and equipment, the Yanks were able to put on a better fight in the Battle of Cheonan. But after the North Koreans' reinforcements arrived, they ended up retreating once again. At the Battle of Chochiwan, the American and UN forces were praised for delaying the opposition, allowing their units to set up defenses around Taejong. When the Battle of Taejong came around, the Americans and South Koreans were able to put up a good fight. However, like the previous battlegrounds, this one belonged to the North Koreans. Shortly before this point, Great Britain joined the UN forces. So when the Battle of Pusan perimeter arrived, the most crucial battle of the war, the UN forces were able to penetrate the enemy lines. Once most of the supply routes for the North Koreans had been cut off and they were facing increasing offenses from the UN troops, they began a humiliating retreat. The Battle of the Pusan perimeter was a resounding victory for the UN troops. Casualties were extreme at Pusan. The South Koreans had more than 40,000 casualties, while the North Koreans incurred almost 64,000. And that is not including South Korea's allies' losses. To quote a soldier, Corporal Roy Aldrich, if we hadn't held the lines at Busan, there would be no South Korea today. Talks of an armistice began in 1951, but it was not until 1953 that the Korean Armistice Agreement was signed. The armistice established the military demarcation line and the Korean demilitarized zone, a buffer zone 2.5 miles wide and 160 miles long. The vital thing to note is that an armistice differs from a peace agreement, and since no peace agreement was signed, the hostilities between the two nations persist. Besides being known as the war that ultimately divided Korea, the Forgotten War is also known for numerous war crimes. The resulting countries, North and South Korea, have taken decidedly different routes since then. With Russia's backing, North Korea fostered a sort of cult of personality, with efforts to create an idealized and heroic image of its leader. Koreans excel in intelligence and innovation, and South Korea is the third largest economic force in the Pacific region after China and Japan today. They became isolated for a time but eventually compromised to accept help from other industrial nations without permitting themselves to become imitators of such cultures. Currently, Kim Jong-un of North Korea and Moon Jae-in of South Korea are making overtures toward reunifying the split country. In 2018, South Korea hosted the Winter Olympics, in which North Korea took part. In addition, separated families from both sides have had several reunion events where they could socialize with family they might not have met before. South Korean President Moon Jae-in has proposed that 2045 might be when the two portions of the country will be unified once again. We hope you enjoyed this video on why are North and South Korea separated. To learn more about Korea, check out our book, History of Korea, a captivating guide to Korean history, including events such as the Mongol invasions, the split into North and South, and the Korean War. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.